So today I have something tricky in the bag. So one thing you have to keep in mind that physics is not all about hardcore natural science. It has a lot to do with the tricks. You know, as an example, if you look at the speedometer of your bike, you know that what does an speedometer does? It shows you the speed at which you are moving forward. And if you are an enthusiastic physicist or you want to be a physicist, you might have been wondering or you might have been curious about how it works because you know that is the basic job of every person in the field of physics. We try to figure out how things work. In case if you're on YouTube for a very long time, you might have been uh, listening about the gravitational wave too much. And there are a lot of scientific videos on the phenomenon called the gravitational wave which was proposed by Einstein and then later tested because they know that also have to do a lot with the tricks. Another example of it is in space. You know, in space we have telescopes and one of the most famous telescopes that you have been listening or hearing about in the internet is the Hubble telescope. What it does? It looks at the very distant stars. But the problem is how we can't see those stars how can it see the, those stars again it have a lot to do with the tricks in the field of physics in case if you're wondering that why i'm telling all of this because you know that this channel is all about solving physics problems it is because the problem we are going to discuss today have a lot to do with tricks please let me know in the comment section if you want to know about the things i mentioned today so let's move on to our today's problem so in today's problem we have an equilateral triangle on the vertices of this triangle we have three bodies and let us give them a name let us say that the body on the top is the body one and the body on the left bottom corner is the body two and the body on the right bottom corner is the body three now what is going to happen is when you say go then body 1 is going to move towards body 2 and body 2 is going to move towards body 3 and body 3 is going to move towards body 1. Now what is our job today is? Now today our job is to decide that in what time are they going to meet given that each body can move with the maximum velocity of v and the sides of this triangle is of say a meters i know that most of you are going to think that they are not going to meet ever but if you're listening me carefully then you might have noticed that i said that body one is moving towards body two it's not that the body one is moving towards the second vertex now after knowing all of this can you calculate the time you have the free will to pause the video or continue. So, if you are giving proper notice to the situation, you might have been thinking that every triangle have a point which is equidistant to all the vertices. And that point is called the centroid of a triangle. Since everybody in the system have the same maximum velocity, so they must be ending at the same point, which is the centroid of the triangle. And the direction of movement of everybody in the system is continuously changing, which happen to be in the direction towards the next body or the body it is following. So what we have to do here is to find the time any of the particle will take to reach at the centroid so let us take the third body so what do we have we have the velocity we have the length of one of the sides of the triangle and we know where the point is where the body is going to end up now what do we have to do is to find the length of the line joining the centroid and the third vertex to do this what we will do that we will draw 
another trick from the bag of tricks of Pythagoras to solve the problem. We will draw a line perpendicular to the base of the triangle from the centroid. And this line happens to be the extension of the same line which is joining the first vertex to the centroid. And this line will divide the base of this triangle into two equal parts. So now we have a right angle triangle with a base length which is equal to the half of the side of the triangle. And the angle between the base of this right angle triangle and the hypotenuse which we uh, want to calculate the length of will be the half of the angle that the two adjacent sides of this equilateral triangle is going to make which happens to be the half of 60 degrees which means 30 degrees now that we know the base of the right angle triangle and the angle between the base and the hypotenuse of this right angle triangle and we know that the cosine of any angle is equal to the ratio of base and hypotenuse so we can cross multiply and replace the hypotenuse and the cosine of the angle and now that we know the distance between the uh, centroid and the third vertex we can draw a line perpendicular to the line whose length we have just calculated from the well the third vertex or the centroid depending upon your choice you can do it i will go for drawing from the third vertex since the particle has started moving from the third vertex so everything up to this time was mathematics and simple calculations here comes the main trick what we will do here is that we will rotate the diagram from the third vertex taking it as the axis of rotation and anti-clockwise by 30 degrees and there you go it started looking like a particle following a parabolic path i mean projectile motion which we are familiar of with a launch angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal so if you are familiar with this channel you might have already known that whenever you are throwing a ball at certain angle from the horizontal you are not actually throwing the ball at that angle you are actually throwing the ball in two different directions that is a vertical direction and a horizontal direction with different velocities and the velocity in vertical direction is going to experience an acceleration against its movement while going upwards and an acceleration in favor of its movement while coming downwards whereas the velocity in horizontal direction is not going to experience any acceleration or any change in its value which in fact is making our job really easy now what we have to do is just that we have to calculate the time the body is going to take to move the particular distance that is distance from the vertex third to the centroid of the triangle with a constant velocity which happened to be the horizontal velocity which is the ratio of the distance to the velocity and there we go this is the solution we are looking for thanks for watching and don't forget to like share and subscribe